In Speech Recognition 101, Part 1, we mentioned that one of the inputs to speech recognition is a language model, or grammar. LumenVox finds that the number one problem new speech developers have is building good grammars. Experienced programmers often find that the nuance of modeling how users speak is more complex than they thought. Because grammars are such an important part of building speech applications, it's worth dedicating an entire video to an overview of language modeling and grammar writing. As you may remember from the first part of this series, an acoustic model is required for each supported language, as a relationship between sounds and written text varies from one language to another. However, in speech recognition terms, a language model is different than an acoustic model. An acoustic model describes the relationship between sounds and written words. A language model describes the relationship between different words themselves. So an acoustic model is about sounds, but a language model is just about words. As an example, an acoustic model might tell you that the sounds k, a, and t, when put together, can make the word cat. But a language model can tell you that the phrase cat fight is more likely than cat watermelon. While cat fight is a somewhat common phrase, cat watermelon is nonsense. And we know this because human beings build language models intuitively. Computers must be supplied with both language and acoustic models. As part of building an ASR, LumenVox provides acoustic models for each language that it supports. Language models, which vary for each application, are mostly supplied by application developers. This is because the kind of words an application will accept can vary drastically. An application to locate a store would expect different words to be spoken than an application which allowed a caller to order pizza. Developers supply language models in the form of grammar files, which are text or XML documents that describe the words a user can speak at any point. You can think of an ASR like a search engine. When you type a search query into a search engine, it compares the input against the giant database of web pages and makes a prediction about the list of pages to show you. Modern search engines use a lot of data about you, such as your type of search and your location, to help narrow down their predictions and tailor the results. An ASR does the same. Grammar files help narrow down the acoustic search, providing more relevant results and giving better recognitions in less time. Because of this, smaller grammars tend to provide better accuracy. With fewer options for the ASR to choose from, there is less room for error. An important principle to keep in mind when you start developing grammars is to provide just enough coverage to handle most of the things your users are likely to say. The grammar standard LumenVox supports is called the Speech Recognition Grammar Specification, or SRGS. This is a W3C specification that defines two equivalent grammar formats the Augmented Bacchus NOR form, or ABNF, and the Grammar XML form, or GRXML. ABNF grammars are generally more concise and thus a little easier to write by hand, whereas GRXML follows the usual XML standards and is commonly used for automatically generated grammars. Both formats are equivalent, so there is no reason to use one over the other, except as a matter of personal preference. Just to give you an idea of what a grammar looks like, let's go through a very simple grammar in the ABNF format. This grammar will allow users to say either the word yes or the word no. Grammars are a very simple sort of programming language, so they follow many conventions found in traditional software development. The first line declares that it is an ABNF grammar, using version 1.0 of the SRGS specification. So far, there is only one version, which means all grammars are ABNF 1.0. There is an optional encoding declaration, and here we are using the UTF-8 format. Finally, you will notice that the line ends in a semicolon, as all lines in an ABNF grammar must do. Up next is a language declaration. The word language is a reserved word in ABNF, and it takes as a language identifier a lowercase two-letter language code, followed by a hyphen and then an uppercase two-letter country code. Here we have the lowercase e, n, for English, and then the uppercase u, s, for the United States. 
This indicates to the ASR that the grammar is designed for the U.S. English dialect. Because the language code determines which acoustic model will be used for the recognition, it is important to always specify the correct language and country. The next line declares that the grammar is of the mode voice. It is possible to build DTMF grammars as well, so all speech recognition grammars must use the voice mode. The final part of the grammar header is a line that indicates the entry point to the grammar. Though we will not cover the details of writing grammars in this video, know that a grammar is essentially a collection of rules that act almost like functions in a programming language. Just as a computer program must have a main function or entry point, a grammar must have a root rule so that the ASR knows where to start processing from. Using the root declaration, we say that the rule called yes-no is the root rule. To indicate a rule name in ABNF, we use the dollar sign, which is why it appears here. The only rule in our grammar is the root rule we declared earlier. In ABNF, the rule name starts with a dollar sign and is then followed by an equals sign. Everything after the equal sign is considered the content of the rule itself. Here we are saying that the yes-no rule can be matched by either the word yes or the word no. The pipe or vertical bar indicates the logical or operator, just as it would in many other programming languages. Taken all together, this grammar simply defines the word yes or the word no as being allowed. Most grammars will not be this simple. Let's take a look at the same grammar in the GRXML format. The grammar header starts with the standard XML prolog, followed immediately by a top-level element called grammar. That element takes several attributes, including an XML namespace declaration, the version declaration, the mode declaration, the root rule declaration, and the language declaration which takes the XML lang format and is common in XML documents. Our yes-no rule is slightly longer in the GRXML format but functions the same. The rule takes the form of an XML element called rule, with an ID attribute specifying the rule's name. Instead of a pipe indicating a logical OR, we have an element called one of, and we separate different choices in elements called items. Now that you have an idea of what a language model and grammar are, you have an understanding of all the components necessary for basic speech recognition. The LumenVox Automatic Speech Recognizer takes spoken audio from a user and compares that audio to its internal acoustic model, using a grammar supplied by an application developer to help guide that search. The ASR then returns text representing what the user said. Because grammars constrain the possible results from the ASR, building good grammars is a vital part of building successful speech applications. For more detailed information on how to write, troubleshoot, and tune grammars, visit us online at developer.lumenvox.com, where you can engage directly with other speech developers, view more videos, and learn from the many white papers, articles, and other resources.